Is this a cool thing? A self-made thermal imaging camera? For only a few bucks. Sounds marvelous. Because recently, lower cost sensors appeared on the market, this seems to be possible. Today we will see whether we can use them and if they are worth the money. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. If you search PIR sensors, you get 8.5 million results. Obviously, passive infrared detection is a widely used technology. We all know PIR sensors and most of us know the expensive FLIR sensors. Today, we will add two other sensors to the comparison. We will start with the ordinary PIR sensor with one pixel and continue with the AMG8833 which has 8 times 8 pixels. The next is the MLX90640 with 32 times 24 pixels. And the last is a FLIR 1, 160 times 120 pixels camera which has to be mounted on a smartphone. The camera shown in the trailer comes from a recent article in hackaday.com. I want to know if I can build one with these sensors and if it's any good. Infrared is a sort of light which is not visible to our eyes, but we can feel it with the skin. The skin is much less sensitive and can only detect higher energies. You feel that if you sit close to an open fire where you do not feel the warm air, but radiation coming from the flame even if the air around you is fresh. IR sensors are similarly sensitive than our eyes, but in a spectrum with a wavelength of above 700 nanometers. Let's start with the first sensor, the single pixel PIR sensor. It measures temperature in one area and compares it with its last measurement. If it detects a difference, it sets the output pin to high. Like that, it can recognize moving heat sources over a distance of a few meters, but it does not react on non-moving targets. It does not need to give absolute values because it focuses on differences. No need to calibrate in any way. Simple. Usually it has an opening angle which can be influenced by a lens. This lens is generally plastic and not transparent for visible light. The price of such a sensor is a few cents to a few dollars. It works as expected. If I move my hand in a distance of two meters, it detects movement. Obviously, this is not a camera. The next sensor is the AMG8833 from Panasonic. It has 64 pixels. This is a big thing. Why? Because we can measure temperature differences in space, not only in time as the cheap sensor from before. Like that we can also detect non-moving targets. And of course, we also can recognize heat distributions in an area. To show that to you, I use an M5 stack module. It contains an ESP32, a display and a battery in one box. It's not cheap, but I had one in the lab for review. And for my tests, it is quite handy. The case from Hackaday is also made for this device, so I printed one. You can buy the sensor in several variants. I use the AMG8833, the enhanced 3 volt version with high gain and Adafruit's AMG88XX library. The values are interpolated and displayed on the screen of the M5 stack. Even if the sensor only has 64 pixels, we see the moving hand in about 1 meter distance, and the whole body in 2 meters. I can show you also a characteristic of all IR sensors. Their measurements depend on the surface of the object. If I wear my white gloves, the hand appears to be smaller than without gloves. Usually you have to enter a factor into the calculations which take this fact into account. But because you usually measure things with different surfaces in one particular area, the same factor does not apply everywhere. Shiny surfaces tend to show much higher temperatures. So pay attention if you want to read absolute temperatures with IR sensors of any kind. I used a sketch written by Offer, the same guy who posted the case for the heat gun to show the heat distribution on the screen of the M5 stack. This is the result. 
you decide if this would help you to find, for example, a hot resistor on a PCB during troubleshooting. For me, this is by far not sufficient. But the sensor might well end up in my attendance sensor in the lab. Currently, I use this PIR sensor. But because my movements are minimal if I do desk work, I have to use a 10 minute delay and hope that it detects a movement during this time. Otherwise, I have to wave at the sensor to switch the light on again. With this 64 pixel sensor, it is quite easy to detect a body by searching for different temperatures in space. If you measure the temperature without body and save it, you can compare this background with the measured temperatures and also find non-moving things. Like that, it would be quite easy to write a sketch to detect me even if I don't move. Whether this is worth the additional $30 compared to the GPO PIR sensor is up to you. If you want to detect only movements, you can use another feature of this sensor. It creates an interrupt signal if some pixels discovered a certain temperature and you can read where the increased temperature was seen. When I got this sensor in my mailbag video, viewers pointed me to a much better sensor, the MLX90640. I ordered the sensors for around $70 and also connected to the M5 stack. By the way, my M5 stack is very hard to program with the Arduino IDE because it often refuses the connection. A 0.1 microfarad capacitor between reset and ground helps a little. But for a $30 microprocessor, this is not acceptable in my opinion. I'm also not the only with this problem, and I hope they fixed the issue in the newer versions. The MLX90640 plays in the different league. It has 32 by 24 pixels and is extremely difficult to handle. A PhD in mathematics does not hurt if you look at the formulas in the datasheet. Why is this overkill necessary? Melexis uses a new technology called Thermopile, which should be cheaper and can be used in quite high or low ambient temperatures. These thermal sensors are influenced by the environment and also during the production process. Melexis tried to produce a sensor which not only shows temperature, it should show the exact temperature because it is calibrated. I tried to find any specification about accuracy, but did not see any. You can think about the reason yourself. But back to the formulas. The chip has a stored calibration value for each pixel which has to be taken into account. These values are measured during manufacturing and it detects the temperature of the sensor itself because this temperature influences the outcome too as many other things. Here you see the stored parameters in each chip. All of them are used by the formulas. Whether these measured values will stay stable over the years is not clear to me. If they change, the accuracy of the sensor obviously will degrade. They also allow themselves 4 defective pixels per chip, which is half a percent. Maybe you want to compare this with dead pixels on your monitor screen. On a 4K display, this is the equivalent of 43,200 defective pixels. Maybe they also found out that not all users have a PhD, at least not in mathematics, and provide a library which does the heavy lifting. I found a sketch by M5Stack which uses this sensor to create a heat gun. Total cost? The M5 stack costs $30 and the sensor $70. Makes around $100. The PLA and the bigger battery not included. Also here, the company behind the M5 stack did not work correctly. It is a good idea, but it did not work. After a lot of investigations, I found that I had to change one parameter from 7 to 0. And then it worked. The wire library signals its acknowledge with a 0, not with a 7. Later I discovered that the temperature shown in the middle of the screen also did not work correctly. Both are corrected and you find a hopefully working example on GitHub. But let's have a look at the results of this more expensive thermal imaging camera. It shows a beautiful picture but also is a toy and cannot be used for any serious work. You do not see any details to find the cause of the problem. What could be the usage of such sensors? If I believe the glossy paper, 
and the YouTube video of Melexis, the sensor is made to detect people in smart homes to adjust for example heating. Maybe this is possible in the proximity of the sensor, but I can imagine that it only works in quite clean areas. If the sun shines and heats something, the chance of a false alarm is quite high. And I'm not sure how much the higher resolution or the calibration helps for this use case. I think standard cameras and image recognition might be a better and cheaper way for this application. Another word of caution. You can get versions of this sensor with a 55 and a 110 degrees angle. I bought the 110 degrees version, which is only useful for quite close objects. If you want to use it in a room to detect people, I think the 55 degrees version is better. As the last step, I compare the previous two sensors with my FLIR 1 camera. FLIR uses micro bolometer technology, which seems to be more expensive and also needs more space for the sensors. This camera has to be attached to a smartphone and costs around $250. So it is much more costly than the other two. The thermal camera has a resolution of 160 times 120. And the opening angle is also 55 degrees, like one version of the MLX 90640. It not only contains a thermal camera, but it also has a regular camera, and both images are mixed in the display. With this trick, you see much more details and better find out where the hotspot is. The resolution of the normal camera seems to be 1440 times 1080 pixels. The result of this camera at least is usable. My version is not the newest one. I do not like it because the camera is not behind the display and it is hard to point at a particular location, especially if you want to use it for troubleshooting of electronic devices. And it has its own battery, which has to be charged separately. And this battery does not last long. Maybe newer versions are better, but I am not sure. Summarized. PIR is a very useful technology for many applications. It is very cheap if you only need one pixel. The price increases fast if you want to have more pixels. 64 pixels for $30, 764 pixels for $70 and 19,200 pixels for $250 and so on. The promise of cheap thermal cameras cannot be kept for the moment. They are much cheaper than a few years ago, but you still have to pay probably more than 500 bucks for a proper camera. The AMG8833 sensor is an improvement over a single pixel sensor because it also can detect still objects, not only moving ones. The MLX 90640 offers more resolution and maybe can solve them special needs, especially where the distance of the object is bigger and the 8x8 sensor cannot resolve it. Both sensors do not specify temperature reading accuracy. The MLX90640 tries at least hard to get good readings with very elaborated formulas. FLIR at least specifies a reading temperature accuracy. All IR cameras suffer from the issue that different surfaces can produce different readings, even at the same temperature. The idea of the M5 stack with its stackable modules is good. The execution, unfortunately, is not done very well. A device which resists programming is not fun. In this project it was useful because I had the files for the case and the two sensors. All in all, this was a costly video, with lots of hopes in the beginning and lots of frustration in the end. You decide if you want to spend the money on one of these products. And if not, at least I saved you a few dollars. Then you can say thank you to all Patreons and other supporters of the channel which make such expensive videos possible. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.